Hello everyone, how are you? I hope you are well. Um, today I'm very excited to film this video because I've actually read some really great books this month. And it's probably the most amount of books I've read in a single month. I'm not actually a very fast reader. Um, I can't read, you know, five books in a week. Um, that's just not me. Um, so I've read six books this month, which for me is an achievement because two of them were um, at least somewhat lengthy. Um, so yeah, I'm proud of myself and I will give myself a pat on the back for that. Um, but yeah, and also, regardless of the fact that I actually read books, I actually read a lot of really great books. Um, and yeah, I felt a bit silly just on my Inst I review book books on my Instagram stories. Um, and I felt a bit silly being like, okay, here's another five star. And everyone was just like, come on, Renee, these can't all be five stars. But they were, they were all really, really fantastic books. Anyway, that being said, there were two books that I didn't get along with this month. And I figured I would start with them. So the first one, um, which was a real disappointment because I was really excited about it. Um, and it was just sounded like a me book. Um, and it was blurbed by Olivia Lang and Helen McDonald, who um, are two really well-respected authors. Um, and that book that I'm talking about is called The Reactor, a book about grief and repair by Nick Blackburn. This book, so basically his father dies and it's his experience with grief. Um, and it's written in short little vignette style musings. And what I didn't understand from um, the information I received before reading this book was that the reactor, the title, refers to the reactors um, in the Chernobyl plant that blew up. Um, and this was used as a motif throughout... I read half of this. I didn't actually finish reading this book. But it was. I got through half and it was still being used as a motif. And it was just in a way that was not really exciting, quite repetitive, but in a boring way. Um, and yeah, I just didn't really find it exciting. Um, it was, there was a lot of him just watching YouTube videos of this girl who was exploring the Chernobyl site and it, yeah, it, it, it included a lot of social media elements, which I really just do not enjoy reading in books. I couldn't care less about social media. Um, and especially, I mean, I'm on social media a lot, but I think for that reason, I just couldn't care less about reading about it in um, novels or non-fiction or fiction um, because when I read a book that's my escape from social media and I really don't want to hear about it at all. Um, so yeah, that didn't really gel with me and apart from that it was it all felt a bit disconnected I think. Um, there wasn't really any emotional attachment that I had to any of the things that he was saying um, and keep in mind, this is supposed to be his exploration on grief. And I don't doubt that it is. And I don't doubt that that is his way of dealing with grief um, and processing grief. But for me, it read very black and white and not really, it didn't really come across as anything um, that made me feel emotive in any way. It, it didn't make me laugh. It didn't make me sad. It didn't make me um, feel sorry for him, which is surprising because this is a man that has just lost his father. Um... So yeah, didn't get along with that one. I was really, really excited about this book. Um, it just felt like it was going to be a me book. And it wasn't, sadly. Um, and another big disappointment, this book I actually did read, and is basically the booktube darling book at the moment. Um, it's just received so much good praise. Um, so much to the point where I can't remember if I included it in... I think it was in a book haul, or maybe even in my five star predictions. I'm not, I can't remember, but I anticipated to love this book. Um, and that is because no one had a bad thing to say about it. Everyone was raving and raving about it. Anyway, that book is Claire Keegan, small things like these guys. I honestly, I don't want to, um, spend too much time talking bad about this book because for me, it wasn't a book for me at all, but for a lot of people, it is their book, and I can respect that. But for me, I just didn't really understand the appeal. It went into 
all of these different ideas and didn't really finish any of the stories. There was a story of, um, so for anyone who doesn't know this, what this is about, it's about a timber merchant um, in Ireland on the lead up to Christmas and he's making all the deliveries. Um, he then makes a discovery which kind of alters his understanding of the town that he lives in. Um, but in the lead up, so he's making all these deliveries of coal to his clients, but he's also spending time with his family and doing all these Christmas things like baking Christmas cakes and stuff like that um, and writing Santa wish lists and stuff. And perhaps I would have enjoyed this more if I did read it around Christmas time, but everyone's reading it now and really, really liking it. So I kind of gathered that Christmas was kind of just in the background, but it really isn't. It is really your main focus of this book. Um, but regardless of that, it... So I went into his, his daughters, he goes through the effort of introducing five daughters and really only talks about a few of them um, in the whole story. Uh, it goes into his story about his past, his mother who worked for, who was a maid for this um, quite wealthy lady who owned a lot of land. Um, and on that land and in that house, they lived as well with her and he was brought up a lot by the lady that his mum worked for. Um, and then there was a... Um, yard keeper or a farm keeper, um, whose name I've forgotten, um, who um, helped him as well. And then there was a story about him possibly being his father that was never actually resolved. Um, that went nowhere as well. And then the whole ending, I won't obviously spoil what the ending is or what the main group about this book is, but the ending, just seemed really sanctimonious to me. It was really just like, he was the only good person in this town and everyone else had the same ideas um, and the same understanding of, you know, keeping quiet about this. But he was the only one that didn't know about it and the only one that wanted to act upon it, which I just found to be really unbelievable. Um, and then the ending was, it was just like, I don't know, he was the hero in the piece and I just really didn't get along with it at all. Um, yeah, it wasn't a book for me. Luckily, the only good thing about, well, the only thing I liked about it, it's not the only good thing about it, but the only thing I appreciated about it was that it was a quick read and it only took me a day to read. Um, so yeah, very disappointed by that one. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to dwell on it anymore. That's it. I have talked about it and on to the next one. The next one is a short one that I loved um, and I finally read. I've been meaning to read this book for a long time. That is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. I loved this book. I love, I've only read um, James Baldwin's nonfiction and I really, really love James Baldwin's not James Baldwin's nonfiction. But um, his fiction, his writing is just incredible. Um, this is a, the story of um, a young man whose name I've forgotten because you only really hear his name, I think it's David. You only really hear his name mentioned a few times in this whole book because it is told from his perspective. Um, and he is living in Paris with his girlfriend who he proposes to. She then decides that she's not quite sure. So she goes over to Spain and spends some time alone to find herself and understand herself and see where she sits with the whole idea of being with someone else for the rest of her life. Um, so while she's over there, he meets Giovanni and they spend some time together. Um, and up until this time, I'm just going to call him David for the sake of this video. Um, if I'm wrong, I'll put a name up here. Um, he is discovering his sexuality and understanding that he might be bisexual. So he forms a relationship with Giovanni, which he kind of doesn't really follow up on after his girlfriend comes back and he kind of leaves um, Giovanni in the dark and this has really bad repercussions. Um, and yeah, I loved this book, the language in it, the connection that um, Baldwin uh, creates between all of his characters was incredible to read. Um, and I really, really liked how the story built up. Um, it was, it kind of just felt like a, a bit of a love triangle kind of situation at the end. And then at the end it turned into something completely different, which when it happens isn't so far fetched, but it is introduced in a way that kind of shocks you. Um, but then when it does happen, you understand why it happened. Um, oh, that's vague. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really, really, really loved this book and I'm so excited to read, um, some more of James Baldwin's fiction, um, because this was 
a fantastic start. Next up, all of the other books that I've read are great, so just um, prepare yourself for me gushing about all of these books. Next up, I want to talk about um, the follow-up to Autobiography of Red, which is from Anne Carson, and I read earlier this year, I think, um, and I loved it. And then followed by that is Red Doc by Anne Carson. Um, if anyone doesn't know what Autobiography of Red is about, which is a book previous to this one, um, it is about a young boy named Geryon, and I think it's a retelling of some myth. I'm not familiar with myths at all. But it's a retelling of a myth. And his name is, I think it's Gerion or Gerion. And he is a little red boy with wings. And basically it's a queer retelling of a story um, that involves a love triangle as well. And it's fantastic. I loved it. This follows the same character, Red, who um, has grown up. He's become a young man. And he's experiencing... He's on this journey, basically to visit his um, dying mother and along with him he brings some friends and they go on this journey together and it's so magical and so beautifully imagined um, and I loved it so much. There were a few parts sure that I was a little bit confused about what was happening but that was very rare um, and I think in a book which is told in this type of form um, you can imagine that you're going to get a little bit lost and disorientated, but it is also really easy just to read over sections and um, make the effort to understand, um, which I thought really was really fun. Um, but yeah, adored this book, and I'm so excited to read more Anne Carson. I'm not too sure how much fiction I've got of hers. I think it's a lot of non-fiction, um, but I do have some poetry of hers that I really want to get to soon. Um, so yeah. I'm on a roll with Anne Carson, which is really exciting because it's an author that when I heard about her, I was really excited about the ideas that I had heard that she expressed in her novels. Um, so I'm really glad that I'm actually really enjoying her. Next up is a book that completely took me by surprise. I found it in a bookshop um, not too long ago, actually, and I actually included it in my recent book haul. Um, and I, I just can't believe how much I loved it. Um, the book that I'm talking about is Irene Solar's When I Sing Mountains Dance. Oh boy, this book, I, the language is, is probably one of the most exciting, well, one of the white writers with some of the most exciting ideas and language that I've come across in a long time. I, if you loved Flames by Robbie Arnett and Lanny by Max Porter, and if you are really into the descriptive language of Toni Morrison, you will love this book. This is a perfect blend of all of the above. Um, it's about a man who, at the start of the novel, he is um, picking mushrooms. Um, I, think, I think they were called chanterelles or something, black chanterelles, which I looked up images and they're beautiful mushrooms. The imagery is amazing. Um, and while he's doing this, there is a storm brewing and he notices that one of his cows is stuck in some wire fencing near a tree. So he attempts to save the cow. And in that, in the meantime, well, not in the meantime, while he's doing this, he is struck in the head, right on top of his head by lightning. Um, and it obviously kills him straight away. But this story, when it starts, is being told by a chorus we. Um, and then you eventually come to understand that it is being narrated by the storm that killed him, the rain. Um, and it was so, so incredible. It's such a smart idea. I'm not going to go in too much into the language, um, but I did want, want, want to read um, just a little passage just to entice you a little bit. All right, so this is the part where he is struck by lightning. I'm not gonna read too much because I do want you to discover it by yourself, but it reads quick as a snake angry, wild like a spider web. Lightning goes where it wants to, like water and landslides and little insects and magpies, transfixed by all things pretty and shiny. The knife was out of Dom Dominic's pocket and it gleamed like a treasure, like a precious stone, like a fistful of coins. The metal blade polished mirror reflected us, us back, like open arms luring us closer. Lightning goes where it will, and the second bolt went into Dominic's head. Deep, deep down, down into his throat, and everything he saw inside his eyes was black from the burn. 
The man collapsed onto the grass and the meadow pressed its cheek to his and all of our giddy happy waters moved into him through his shirt sleeves, beneath his belt, into his underwear and socks. Searching for still dry skin, he died. And the cow took off in a frenzy and the calf followed after. <sighs> I mean, like, it's it was so incredible to read and after you get that narrative from the rain, you get so many other different narratives. Um, there's uh, a narrative from the mountains that they live in, the Pyrenees, and there's a narrative from a dog, which you would probably imagine would be quite coy, but it isn't. It's quite vicious and um, exciting. Uh, and then there's villagers, uh, there's villagers' perspectives as well. There's a giant that lives in the mountains whose perspective, whose, um, you get the son of his, this giant, his perspective. So fantastic. So many different voices in such a little book. And I never got lost in the meantime. Um, there was one voice who I'm still unsure that, who it was, but I think I enjoyed that, that it was just like a, a villager passing through the village. Um, and I think that was intentional, but yeah, fantastic read. Like I said, if you're a fan of Max Porter and, um, Robbie Arnett, then that book, I'm very sure that you'll really, really enjoy. Anyway, now that tangent is over. Um, my two favorite books of the month. Next up is a book, um, called Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller. I still can't get over how much I enjoyed this book. Um, I was told that if I loved Elmet by Fiona Mosley, I would love this, and that couldn't be more true. It gave off very strong Elmet vibes, but while being its very own individual story. Um, it's about two um, twins who are in their 50s, and they are living with their mother um, on a bit of um, land that was given to them after something tragic happened. And they had this agreement that they could stay there for the remainder of their life. Um, but at the start of the novel, their mother dies and they are alone and they're very dependent on their mother, especially at 52 years old. They're still very dependent on their mother and they're finding it hard to understand what needs to happen. Their mother stays in the house for a few days, her body covered over by a blanket. And yeah, it's really unsettling. So then it develops into um, ideas on land ownership and who owns the land. And um, eventually they get kicked off the land and move into a caravan and it all unfolds from there. And it's very, very, very thrilling and exciting um, and sad. The ending of this book, I can't, explain how much I loved the ending of this book. It was incredible. Um, I mean, sure, it may have been one of those, it all worked out in the end type of stories, but I think I needed that. <laughs> um, I tend to read a lot of books that are very sad and they don't have happy endings. Um, intentionally, of course, but I put myself through that. So this was a sad book that also had a really nice ending and I really, really appreciated that. Um, so yeah, fantastic. The nature writing and the settings and the descriptive language on those settings and the places was incredible. I just, you know, when the, dis the description of a space is so well done that you build up images in your head of what this land might look like, that's what I was doing. And I had this map drawn out of the, the place where they lived. Um, and yeah, I really, 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 really loved it. It was fantastic. Um, very excited to read some more Claire Fuller. So the next book, my favourite book of the month, um, and possibly it could end up being one of my favourite books of the year, um, Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. I'm sure you guys are all sick of hearing about this book. So many people have talked about it already. Um, but I'm joining in. It was fantastic. If anyone, I'm sure you all know what this is about, but if you don't, it's about a young boy named Shuggy who is um, growing up in Glasgow with his mother, who is an alcoholic, and whose father has just, um, sorry, Shuggy's father has just um, kind of left the picture. Um, he's very absent. He only sees Shuggy, I think, twice um, in this story. And yeah, it's all about Shuggy dealing with his alcoholic mother. He's got a brother and sister that live with him as well. His sister leaves home and goes somewhere else. His brother is... Um, 
very protective of his mother, but also he's kind of just sick of her shit, basically. Um, so Shugi is really there left on his own defending and protecting his mother. And it's really, really sad to just see this young boy who, you know, should be out playing and enjoying himself. Um, taking full responsibility of an alcoholic parent. It's very, very sad. Um, I say this with a smile on my face, but I don't know why I'm smiling. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's just fantastic. The, the character that Shugi turns into is such a brilliant description of a person who has grown up um, around trauma, around trauma of who he is as a person, a gay little boy, um, and the bullying he receives from that um, as a person with a lack of trust um, because of the um, stuff that his mother put him through um, and his father who left him. Um, and yeah, this book was just incredible. I, I can't say a bad thing about it. Every page, there wasn't a fault. There wasn't anything wrong with this book. And I'm so excited about Young Mungo. Um, often when I read a book that I love so much like this, and it happened with A Little Life as well, a secret part of me just thinks like, you know, can the author just write a story like this again, um, but change it up a bit? Because I just need to experience the same emotions and the same joy that I felt reading such an incredible book. And to be honest, it kind of sounds like Douglas Stewart has done that <laughs> with Young Mungo. Um, Young Mungo follows very similar themes and very similar settings and ideas, um, but has told a different story in that setting and um, collection of ideas. So yeah, I think that's the first time that I've actually been given what I wished from an author, um, which, you know, is good, but hopefully next time <laughs> he writes something else different. But yeah, I don't think I spoke very coherently about Shuggy Bane. I just loved it so much that I just, I forgot everything that I wanted to say, but hopefully um, some of that made sense. But yeah, that is it from this video. Um, they are all my books that I've read. Some of them are definitely going to be favourites of the year. I'm sh very sure of that. And yeah, I'm just really happy about this month's reading. Um, I found some really, really fun, new, exciting authors, and I'm very excited um, to see what they will do next and to see what they have done next as well. But yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate um, you being here. Please touch me down in the comments. Um, I always look forward to comments, but they don't come by very often. <laughs> um, so please, if you um, are excited about any of these books, please talk to me down below about them because, um, yeah, like I said, I really, really enjoy the interaction with you guys in the comments. It's one of my favorite things about uploading a video, so I'd really appreciate it um, if you join in. So yeah, again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. See you guys.